Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the Fujifilm GFX 50S2. I've had this camera a little bit over a year and I wanted to do a video of kind of my review on the Fujifilm medium format ecosystem. Not only do I have the Fujifilm with the kit lens, I also have the Fujifilm 110 millimeter, which is like the equivalent to 85 on a 35 uh, millimeter format camera. Over the last year, I've used this camera mostly for personal projects, but also sometimes I use it for work too. And I wanted to tell you why I love this camera, but also why this camera may not be for you. And if you stay till the end of the video, I'll give you my impressions on what it's like shooting medium format versus DSLR versus mirrorless, because I shoot on all three. First, let me give you a little backstory on how I got into the Fujifilm ecosystem, why I love this camera, but also why this camera may not be for everyone. And hopefully by the end of the video, you can make an informed decision on if the GFX or medium format ecosystem of Fujifilm might be right for you. First, I wanna say through and through, I've always been a Nikon guy. Even through college, when everything was Canon, I had shot Nikon and I continued to shoot Nikon through college. So much so that when even when we started the business and I started doing photography and expanding into video work, I had bought a second Nikon D750. It wasn't until after I got more into cinematography and learning about cinema cameras and filmmaking that I realized that the Nikon D750 just wasn't gonna do what I wanted it to do. So then I started working into a cinematography based cameras and, and workflows. For anyone who's been in the Nikon ecosystem, back for full frame and DSLR. Mirror, their new mirrorless systems are, are definitely have caught up in filmmaking, but back during the DSLR days, if anybody has used the Nikon system, they'll know that they're great for taking photos, they're great for shooting photos, but they've, they've never really been good for filming. So you're probably asking yourself, what does this story have to do with the Fujifilm GFX 50S2? Well, I wanted to give you a little bit of backstory about how I came into this camera system and why I love this camera so much and have become a Fuji fan. Once I realized that Nikon was holding me back on my film endeavors and I started getting more into cinematography style cameras, I had started to kind of want something that was a little bit more of a hybrid system and that turned me on to the Canon R5. Over time, the Canon R5 became my photography camera and my film camera because of its robust filming capabilities, um, the ability to film in 8K RAW or 4K high speed 120 frames per second. I am filming right now on the Canon R5 and I love the colors that come out of it and, and it works really good as a little hybrid camera. But this camera still was not what I wanted for photography. I love the colors, I love the 50 megapixel sensor, but for me, it was a work camera. It was, I was using it for work. And anybody who's ever had a hobby and has turned it into work, you'll know that once it becomes work, it's really hard to be a hobby anymore. So when I have a camera that I'm using specifically for work, I don't really wanna go out and photograph with it or use it as, as often as I would like. And that was the case. About a year ago, I had been watching some YouTube videos and I wanted to uh, just kind of see what other cameras were in there. I was just yearning to find something that I could just do photography with, that I could just enjoy and and enjoy like taking photos again. And it, it, there was no hybrid system. There was no connections to work. And you know, as easy as it could have been to just go back to the Nikon D750s, which are amazing cameras. I just I just felt that I kind of outgrown what I wanted to do with them and what I was able to do with them. And so I had watched some other people talk about the Fuji films. I learned about the pros and cons and I decided I really just wanted a camera that I could just do photos with again. I could just kind of find that hobby and passion. And of course, like anything that you want as a hobby and, and do, it, it still ha has been used on um, on a few projects for work. But for the most part, I, I don't use it for work because one, it is medium format. It is still a little slower than than you would expect. It's not a fast camera like say the Canon R5. So if I'm in a work environment where I need to shoot portraitures and stuff very quickly, 
this this camera just doesn't do it as quick as I want now it does take portraits it takes amazing portraits especially with the 110 like I've taken some personal portraits and I'll flash some up here on the camera now that I just love I mean the color science the 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 type of bokeh being able to you know go down to an f2 which I think on the equivalent is like almost an f1 I'm not too technical so I don't want to get too much in the technical side of that but the look is, is really great but even with the kit lens which is a uh, 4.5 to 5.6 which I, is not 35 millimeters is actually less I get really sharp images it is amazing how sharp it is with the 110 the glass is so precise that I have to work a little bit harder to get those sharp images that the kit lens brings me but both are amazing lenses. The one thing that the, the 50S2 doesn't really say is it says that it's a 50 megapixel uh, sensor, but when you take a raw photo, the raw photos are 100 megabytes each, and that is a lot of data. So if anybody has shot medium format film, you will know. I mean, this has the same look, the same properties, the same uh, type of feel that you get when you're shooting medium format film. When I got into the Fuji system, I, I had just realized something was missing for me. I just I was doing work photography, but I wasn't passionate about it. And so when I got into this ecosystem, I just, it really made me feel like I could just go out and do photos. Before I got into working photography, I was always a landscape photographer. And if, if you enjoy landscape photography or you enjoy taking nature shots, you, you know that that part of the fun is just going on the hike and getting to the destination and then just being able to set up. It, it's like, it's almost like just being one with your surroundings and, and capturing that moment in time. And, and that was what I felt like was really missing for me over the last few years. And so when I, when I got into this ecosystem, I just realized that even though the camera is slower in a lot of ways, it allowed me just to enjoy the moment and enjoy taking the photo and enjoy the process. I've also found myself doing a lot more uh, panoramas and stuff too, and not just straight regular panoramas, but I've really taken photos from down and over and just seeing what kind of image I could get because if you've ever printed photos or printed your work in a, in a large format setting, you just know that just having that crystal clear picture is just so amazing. And, and this camera provides that. You know, there is a lot of things to really love about this camera. If, if you're shooting landscapes or you're shooting non-moving portraits where it doesn't have to be super fast paced, th this camera works great. Now, if you're trying to fire off like sports photography or any type of fast moving subjects where you need a high shutter, this camera is not for you. It's just not gonna be the camera that you need. But if you are looking to take that next step or you're looking to upgrade from either mirrorless or uh, full frame cameras and you shoot landscapes, I would highly recommend this camera. I just think that the quality you get from it, the sharpness you get from it, the color science, you know, the cool thing with this is if you want to shoot JPEG and you don't want to mess with the raw, you can make your own Fujifilm recipes, which is a, a really popular thing right now. The X100V is really sharp in popularity and a lot of it is because people are able to shoot with film recipes that emulate film. After I got this camera, I started shooting film again. I, I never really shot film even back in the start of, of my photography journey. When I got into this camera, it made me want to shoot film. And so I got into the 35 format system and I just realized I could take my film camera and I could take this camera and just go go somewhere and just set up and enjoy metering and enjoy looking at stuff and, and taking photos of things I see and just capturing those moments again that I just felt like I, I didn't do for the longest time. Like even if it was something mundane and something I'd never put out, it's just stopping and, and just capturing it and, and feeling like, yeah, I could have a camera that shoots 20 frames per second and, and gets motion and gets, you know, sports portraitures and just fire 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 and what i get or i could just go back to something slower that just felt like i was why i enjoyed photography in the first place and i think that if you are someone who's looking into slowing down this this or even you know film which has become hugely popular again but also highly expensive it, it gives you a lot of control and so back to what I was saying, you can you can add film recipes and there is six custom modes on here that you can dial in 
um, from a website and just and just have those recipes or you can shoot raw and even by shooting raw you have all of fuji starter point recipes i think there's like nine or ten of them and they're great starting points if if anybody who's ever sh camera matched or been stuck with adobe color you realize that your camera has a lot more better properties to what it's like how the camera should see it the simulations that even fuji offers built in that is that is in lightroom or capture one just is a great starting point for editing these photos um, i've realized that the amount of colors the amount of details the amount the, the looks that i really wanted to create i can do with this camera so i'm talking a little bit about film recipes for me personally i have dabbled with the recipes and i have like all six of my uh, dials set in but what I learned after shooting with them for me personally is that I still just enjoy shooting raw and taking it into Lightroom. What I'll, what I'll usually do is I'll find, I got two or three of the film simulations I really like as my starting point and then I'll just work and edit it and, and it's not only on the photography side but on the editing side. It has just been a joy to edit the photos and, and see what I get from them and put them out there. Anyone who follows this channel knows that we are a design and multimedia agency. And over the last year or two, we've also started printing more. One of the things I did when I got our large format printer was to test print on a 54 inch media, uh, one of the photos I took from the Fujifilm camera. And I'll tell you, it looks amazing. Um, I think it was about 40 inches wide and 24 inches long, but I'll tell you the quality and the crispness and the sharpness on that thing is so amazing. And so if you're somebody who likes to print, likes to have control over the whole look of stuff, shoots landscapes or shoots portraits that, you know, you can just take your time and, and spend with th this camera is the chef's kiss. Okay, so the things I don't love about the Fujifilm GFX 50 S2 isn't that dramatic, but let's be real. If you are trying to get into this system, it is medium format cameras. And though the prices have come down and become more affordable lately, it is still an expensive ecosystem to get into. Also considering that this camera really only does photos Yes, it does film, but if you're into any sort of serious filmmaking, this is not going to be the camera for you. I consider this 100% my photography camera. I don't do any filming on it. I've never messed with any of the film settings, and I don't plan to mess with any of the film settings. So if you're taking that into consideration, then this might be an expensive ecosystem to get into. If you are someone who is looking to do it and can justify it, it, it is worth it. it. It took me a while to really feel like it was that, but once I really started just enjoying making photos again, I, I can really justify it. Also getting into the lens system outside the kit uh, Also getting into the lens system outside of the kit lenses it is also very expensive. The 110, probably one of the most expensive camera lenses I have. The other cool thing is that you can get adapters and shoot with vintage glass. Um, I have seen a lot of videos where people are shooting the Fujifilm with vintage glass and they get some amazing quality stuff. I am looking to probably get an adapter for this for some of the FD lenses I have and then I can do some uh, comparisons with that. I am working on a video right now for uh, comparisons between the Canon R5 with uh, the FD lenses on it and I am excited to put that video out to you guys here hopefully in the coming uh, few weeks. Again another thing I don't like is that if you are working for a client that requires anything with speed or fast shooting or needs to turn around and show stuff quick because even getting in the preview mode takes time when you're loading such big raw files, then this camera will not be for you. It, it just, it doesn't shoot fast. It's not made for fast moving things. It is really made for high-end photography, high-end product photography, most likely, high-end beauty shots that you can just 
shoot slowly but if you're trying to move fast with beauty or any of that type of stuff this is probably not going to be it also the autofocus can be hit or miss because of the type of autofocus it is um, if I remember right, it's a contrast-based autofocus. Sometimes it can be hit or miss, especially with the 110 and you're wide open. If I don't have good lighting on it, I can miss, and it's really hard to see sometimes. For the most part, I, I have liked what comes out of the camera and the lens. Overall, though, for what medium format was in digital and what it's come to, Fujifilm has really done an amazing job on this camera. The, the color science is there, the feel that you could almost feel like it's a medium format film camera without having to process all the film obviously if you spend a lot of time you could probably make it look as much as film like you you want the the data is there i have not really done a lot of grain simulations to match film but a lot of the colors and a lot of the looks i have got that that has a real film feel so if you're someone looking for nostalgia or that type of look then this will probably be the camera for you if you're if you're looking to make that step up to medium format the autofocus and the type of frames per second it can shoot and, and any of that is no comparison to what the canon r5 can do now all these things i feel like might just be a little nitpicking but that's the reality when you're comparing or reviewing something or trying to help someone make an informed decision. And that's my goal. My goal is to, to hopefully help you decide, is this a camera or an ecosystem you want to get into? Now, maybe you don't want to get into medium format, but you've also seen some of the stuff that Fuji does. Fuji Film has an amazing lineup of cameras right now. So even if the medium format is not something you're looking for, but you've kind of wanted to know what the Fuji ecosystem overall is like. A lot of their cameras have the same features. A lot of the cameras have simulations. A lot of the cameras have great detail. I would say as, as far as pure photography side of things, right now I feel like Fuji is, is winning hands down. In conclusion, I just wanna say that this camera is a beast. It is, it made me love photography again. It, it has really inspired me to go out and be as creative as I, as I can and as time allows me to be. Compared to full frame and mirrorless, I've already repeated multiple times just what this camera can do. It, it just above and beyond is, is more sharp when you zoom in. It just has the pixels and, and the file sizes are just a lot bigger. You have a lot more control over the color. The color science is amazing on this camera. It feels like its own system. And I think that's one thing that, that people love certain cameras for. People love Canon because of their color or Nikon because it you know it's great for wildlife photography. Everything kind of has a little bit of a niche, but I think for the Fujifilm, if you're looking for that nostalgia and, and just that love of taking photos, then I would, I would tell you 100%, whether it's the medium format or a different system in the Fujifilm uh, lineup, I would say make the jump. It, you know, if you can justify it, go ahead and do it. And I'm not even saying you need to be selling all your photos or you know, doing galleries and stuff. It's just one of those things that if you can justify it and, and you love photography, then Fujifilm might be for you. Maybe it's not the medium format one, but there are lots of options and I think Fuji is do doing a really good job on, on their camera lineups. Now running the business, I still have use for each of my camera systems. I would say that the Nikon is probably the least used one, but I have used it in, in certain situations like, if I'm doing real estate photography and stuff like that, because mainly I have the lenses for that camera. Same with the R5, I still use it almost daily for filming. I shoot almost all my B-roll on videos with it. Um, I shoot all my wildlife still uh, for both Instagram and just photos because I have the lens for it and I just, it can shoot better. Now for the Fuji, I shoot a lot of landscapes. I shoot a lot of just high-end portrait looking um, stuff that I just want to have a certain feel with and, and pretty much that's that's my go-to stuff and that's what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I just uh, if I'm not working I'm trying to shoot landscapes or just go out and shoot things I see out on the island and and when I'm traveling it has worked really well and has really made me love photography again I don't know I, I know I've mentioned it multiple times but I don't know that I could stress it enough that it really 
brought that fire of doing something that I was always passionate about and always loved when I first got into photography. It really brought that back out for me. I really do hope that this video helps and brings some value, even if even if it's just a little bit and, uh, and it's something that you were on the fence about. I hope that my uh, input can help sway you one way or the other. Whether that's uh, to move to Fuji or not to move to Fuji, I just hope that uh, that having this conversation with you today would would really um, you know help you make that educated decision. Though I don't go into a lot of the tech stuff, I think there's a lot of videos out there that can get super hands on. I'm hoping that between the combination of me talking about how I personally feel about it and also showing you some of the work that I've done with the Fuji throughout this video can help you decide if this camera is for you or if the Fuji ecosystem is for you. And that's my goal. And so if you like this content, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, go ahead and subscribe. You know, our channel is going to be about filming different things that I like about both photo and video. Uh, my wife designs and she wants to bring videos about design and then also just what our life is in in a rural island on Alaska and running our business. If you are new to the channel or, or this is the first time you're watching, please go back and, and check out any of our other videos. Uh, leave in the comments any videos that you guys would love to see. I want to just try to continue to provide content that you guys really enjoy and, uh, and, and just feels authentic and, and feels real to me. Or I can bring my knowledge to you guys and hopefully help give you guys informed decisions. Uh, so with that, I'm going to end this video and I will see you guys in the next one.